and welcome to Fender Play Live. I'm your host this week, Sebastian Bentley. We're here in Fender Hollywood, just blocks from the Sunset Strip. So in honor of the brand new HM Strat that came out yesterday, uh, we're going to be talking about all the 80s shredding glam metal that you guys can handle. Uh, we're going to cover the artists, the gear, the techniques, and as always, we're giving some stuff away, so stick around. Uh, but first, help me please welcome my guest, Chris Griotti. Hey, there he is. Chris is a guitarist, producer, and songwriter who works with artists like Youngblood, Grimes, Poppy, Blink-182, Pussy Riot, Ooh. and he is also the front man of a killer band called Blame Candy. So welcome back to the show, Chris. Hey, thanks for having me, Seb. Yeah, I appreciate course. it. All right. Very excited to be here. Oh, yeah. So um, just wanted to grab a couple quick questions for you. Just uh, how, how long have you been playing guitar? Half my life. Oh, okay. And you know exactly how old I am. Yeah. So. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and more importantly, today's episode, we're, we're focusing on 80s metal. So, so tell me a little bit about that moment. Like, when was that thing that changed everything for you and, and then got you into metal? Uh, I used to, I was learning, I was learning really simple stuff when I first started out. Um, and uh, then I just, I heard, I heard Randy Rhodes with Crazy Train and That'll do it. It's pretty tight, man. Yeah. And then c c combined with that with a little uh, Ice Cream Man by Van Halen, I heard that on the radio. Okay. Doesn't really make sense. Sure. That's not really a single, sure. but. Um, and that solo just, yeah, that got me. I was like, whew. Totally. Gotta yeah. learn some of that. Awesome. All right, well, we've got a lot of stuff we're gonna be showing off today. We got some gear, so let's start off the bat with, uh, what, are you, what are you playing right now? What, what, what is this hot little number? This is the, uh, the Fender HM Strat. HM obviously stands for heavy metal. Heavy metal. Um, which we love, and uh, it's very, Kill. very high gain, high output, humbucker, little bluesy neck pickup vibes, you know what I mean? Yep. Um, and uh, running through the old uh, Fender Deluxe reverb, a little bit of distortion added on the ground. Um, killer. It's, it's ready to rip. Great. Wow. Yeah, yeah, we've been checking out these guitars all day and they're, they're super killer, like 24 frets. Yes. You know, which is great. <laughs> Got a nice, slim, shreddy neck. Got a little coil tap on that bridge pickup there too, if you want oh, to get does. sensitive there. Woo! You know, you can get that thing happening. The Got ding. the locking Floyd Rose. Like this is, you know, it's it's everything I personally need from a guitar. So it's 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 a hot little number, yeah. like I said. So, um, anyways, uh, we're gonna be talking all about 80s metal today. So let's get this thing kicked off with a little song, yeah? Yeah. Um, cool. Let's. Do you know any? Um, do you know any Tesla? Oh, yeah. 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 I think, wow. I think I got one of those in, 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 under my fingers. Let's here, drive. So. Let's drive MDC for the kids. Perfect. Mo little modern day cowboy by Tesla. All right. So. One, two, three. <laughs> So, Chris, to start a hop. <laughs> Thank yes. you. Derek in the back, that's my guy. Yes, sir. I just kind of feel your energy coming at me. <laughs> so and it's. The I was playing worse earlier today and then came in the room and wow. Yeah. Just I wanted everyone at home to, to know. <laughs> 
Awesome. So to uh, to start off, uh, probably most of our viewers know what we mean by 80s metal, but it's a wide umbrella. There's a lot of styles, a lot of artists. So uh, for some of us who might not be as familiar, uh, or maybe haven't even ever dipped their toes in the 80s metal pool here. Uh, let's start with some basics and define what 80s metal is. So, um, you know, what, what are we thinking here? We, we, I think uh, what we're talking about is sometimes no... It's ba basically, it's metal from the decade of the 80s, Seb. <laughs> Perfect. Um, okay. Yeah, so I mean, the, all jokes aside, Yeah. love you, buddy. <laughs> um, the um, it's it's a genre of music that kind of um, was was the the most popular um, high technical guitar guitar era. Um, hence why you know you have like all these people with these super slim necks and the um, the locking tremolos. Um, I guess kind of in the the post glam rock was with the look. Sure. Um, and um, we're talking your. Uh, your David Bowie's and your T-Rex's um, that m merge that with uh, California rock outfit, um, Van Halen's uh, charisma and super over the top um, musicianship and instrumentation and attitude. Um, and uh, you, you get the uh, the roaring 80s hair metal. Yeah. Um, and I say hair metal because, well, no. Um, uh, it just, I guess we were saying earlier, it just coincidentally, once, once that kind of took place and bands like Motley Crue started popping up and getting popular um, in the early 80s, um, it seemed like for about 10 years there was this whole genre, whole scene in the Sunset Strip zone where um, they were... It was like hundreds of bands with the exact same look, right, right. nearly the same sound. Yeah, uh, a couple of producers just kind of taking over the whole entire um, recording situation. Totally. Um, and uh, that's I think I summed it up. Oh yeah, androgynous yeah. aesthetic. Yeah, that's true. Yep. Yeah. Wait, you scrolled down right when I was reading it. There we go. Clothing, they wore clothing. Yep. Uh, so animal print, crucial, crucial. Yeah. Print. But the whole thing here, I mean, at least for me, you know, it's it's <laughs> like the attitude behind it is really big. Is growing up, like when yes. I came up, like playing and listening to metal, it was a lot of like dark and angry. Everything's really heavy, which I love, like super down for all that stuff. But this era was it was like metal but fun. You know, everybody's having a good time. Like it's it's party Definitely. music. Like you were saying, we were talking earlier, and you were saying like it's like LMFAO but rock. You know? <laughs> like is pre LMFAO exactly metal. You know, and it's like for me any any. <clears throat> time where the guitar like virtuosic guitar playing is like the focus like that's kind of the price of entry for a lot of these bands like everybody's ripping sweet solos everybody's doing making crazy noises everybody's playing guitars that are wild colors and it's just it was just a really like kind of expressive like wonderful thing so um very that's fun. 80s metal as very far fun. as far as we wanted to find it so uh we also we got some instagram questions to answer so uh let's let's rapid fire through these yeah Sure. Um, what, Chris, is your favorite effect? Um, I love a, uh, a gentle analog slap back delay. Just a little tickle in there. You can't even hear it. Yeah. Little tickle, though. I'm telling you, you need it. Perfect. Go on. Okay. So, and then we were talking about this too. What's the best tuning for 80s metal? Let's say at the same time. Three, four, half, half step, step down. down. All right. <laughs> so, um, and then let's, yeah, let's let's move on here. So, well, let's let's uh, let's jam on another tune here. Uh, we were playing a little bit of this one earlier. It's uh, "Round and Round" by Rat. Oh, sick. Got a couple cool guitar moments in this one for you. So, one, two, three. <laughs>
right, so we talked about a little bit of the characteristics of what defines 80s metal, um, but what about some of the bands and the artists that you'd think define this style? Like, who, who are some of your favorites <clears throat> that influenced you? Uh, Van Halen was my number one favorite. Yep. Um, and I feel like I give them credit for like really pioneering a uh, that the feel and the sound. Um, and uh, love them. And um, Ozzy with Randy Rhodes. Love those Blizzard of Oz um, and Diary of Madman albums. I actually liked him before Van Halen. Um, Guns N' Roses, if you can put them in there. Um, uh, Skid Row and White Lion. White Lion, lesser known in some ways, but the solos and that stuff is really interesting um, to me. Uh, Vito Brada, the guitar player, he kind of played major solos, very, okay. very melodic kind of yeah. situations. Um, almost classical progressions in here and there, but um, really kind of interesting stuff. Like, um, let me let me yeah, kind of say what I'm saying here. Um, it's like major key stuff. You just didn't hear it in any of the other any other big bands. Um, <laughs> Okay, so next up we're going to be taking a look at some awesome guitar shredding techniques that define the style. Some of the things you're doing in there, a little finger tapping, some legato playing, some economy yeah. picking, all that cool stuff. Sure. Uh, but first up, let's head to the studio to learn a little bit about one of my favorite techniques, the dive bomb. Ooh. And we're going to check that out in this week's Insider. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Ozzy Carmona, session guitarist and one of your Fender Play instructors. If you've ever listened to 80s metal, you've probably heard one of the classic staples of that genre, the dive bomb. This technique was pioneered most notably by Jimi Hendrix, but really came to be used by a ton of players like Eddie Van Halen, Joe Satriani, and Dimebag Darrell. It's a pretty simple technique that can really give you some wild metal sounds. Here's what it sounds like. <laughs> Now before we jump into the technique, it's important to have the right amp setting. You can technically do a dive bomb with a basic clean amp, but if you really want to get that gnarly 80s metal sound, make sure your amp has a ton of high gain distortion and a bit of delay. I'm using a Mustang GT100 with an overdrive going into a Metal 2000 and a mono delay setting. But if you have a clean amp at home, try using a heavy distortion pedal in front and some delay if you got it. Next up, obviously the type of guitar is important as well. I'm playing a Fender Player HSS Strat, which has a humbucker in the bridge position. It also has a locking tremolo system, known as a Floyd Rose, which has a floating tremolo bridge and a locking nut. This will allow me to really use the tremolo to an extreme without causing my strings to go out of tune. Check this out. <laughs> If you don't have a Floyd Rose or a guitar with humbuckers though, don't worry about it. Dive bombs are all about style. And you can still get some pretty mean sounds regardless of what kind of guitar and tremolo system you have. So how does it work? To dive bomb, all you do is play a note and then drop the tremolo arm all the way. Here's what it sounds like. <laughs> That's a basic dive bomb, and it's a pretty simple technique, but the great thing about dive bombs is that there are some tricks you can do to spice it up. One thing you can do is a dive bomb on a harmonic rather than a fretted note. That'll give you a much higher and whinier tone, which can be pretty fun. Here's a dive bomb with a few natural harmonics. Check it out. <laughs> For an even higher squealing dive bomb sound, you can use a pinch harmonic instead of a natural harmonic. Here's how that sounds. For you fans of Eddie Van Halen, you may sometimes hear him play something that sounds like a horse whinny. Just give the tremolo arm a good shake on the way down. 
You can also pull up on the whammy bar to go the opposite direction, which gets some pretty awesome sounds too. Here's a motorcycle revving up type of sound. And a natural harmonic squeal made famous by Dimebag Daryl. Let's hear some dive bombs in context. That's all there is to it. Dive bombs are an awesome way to get some out of this world sounds from your guitar. For more in-depth exercises to hone in your skills, check out our lessons on Fender Play. And remember, keep practicing, and we'll see you next time. And Woo. we're back. All right, Chris, so we just uh, we switched a couple guitars out here. Why don't you tell me about this, this little piece you got here? This is a uh, Fender Elite, maybe oh. from last year. Okay. Um, the kind kind folks at Fender uh, lent it to me for, well, gave it to me, for um, my tour with Eve Toomer, which went great. Sweet. Some lovely photography took place. There you go. There it is. Nice. You can see, a little back bend action. Love that. <laughs> in Portugal. And um, yeah, it's it's ready ready to rip. How about you? What color is this? What do you call oh, this that? This is uh this is another one. This is the ice blue. And there's there's a couple different colors. We got the yellow, we got the pink, we got the ice blue, and there's a frost white, I believe. Um, but they're all super sick and uh, I figured I'd show this one off as well, you know? Right. So uh, let's get into it. Let's get back into playing here. So uh, let's play another tune that you can learn on Fender mm. Play. This is a classic, you know. It's yeah. uh it's a tune mm. by that you might know by a band called Warrant. A little cherry pie for you. I love that. Thing. One, two, three. <laughs> So this genre, like we were talking about before, it's a lot about virtuosity, over the top playing, loud, many notes, as many as you can fit in a phrase at any point in time. Uh, so it's one of the most fun things for a guitarist to sink their teeth into. It's all about shredding and showing off and having fun. So let's dig into some of those techniques that are common uh, in this yeah. genre. So first and probably most important, we should talk about finger tapping. Okay. okay. This guy, maybe this guy, get two of them in there. Here, you know? Yep, yep. Boom. <laughs> All right. Yeah, one or the other, totally fine. I like to use the pointer finger like Eddie, um, but the middle finger is good for a little quickie. Where's that? <laughs> Well, Steve Vai action would be like a. What, what does he do? The frickin'. Um... Crucial. You can bend and tap. You can bend and harmonic tap. And that brings us to our next technique. The dive bomb. I guess that was technically pioneered by your boy James Hendrix. Yeah, you know, that was that was one of his things, but I mean everybody kind of took that to another level, you know, in in the yeah. you know the, my favorite was always like di Dimebag Daryl's dive bombs, mm. the harmonics and the crazy. Big Daddy. Know. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff you can do there with uh, with your whammy bar. If you got a Floyd Rose tremolo uh, system or something similar, keep yourself uh, in tune with a patented Floyd Rose exactly. available here on the HM Strat by Fender. Precisely. Um, some other stuff we could talk about the uh, the good old pick squeal. Oh my God. Harmonic. Oh, my God. 
Crucial in this genre is crucial to attempt to do a pinch harmonic on every single note you play, even if it's a riff. Exactly. Um, so, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. Obviously, we can get those tapped harmonics that you were talking about, pick squeals, dive bombs. Mm. Um, we also, there's a big... It's crucial to harmonize. Exactly. Let's do, let's we'll, do it like an E scale or something. So, yeah, maybe yeah, on yeah. That, starting on that. Three, four. <laughs> gotta exactly. do that. You gotta get the two, the two guitar mm. action. Harmonized leads are super important. There's also there's a thing I, I do, I call it the top gun lick. You take a, you take your pentatonic scale and you just harmonize that and forth. You know, that always just kind of gets me going in that in that, that sort of realm there. Um, and a, then, a sweep arpeggio can be very promising. I'm not the most sweepy on the block, but um, I do have one that's pretty fun. It's basically the concept is you're you're playing a chord. And all the different notes, and then sweep like you would, you know, your mother's kitchen floor. Ah. I love that. Got you can find that sweep in the song "Scary Mask" by Poppy. Exactly. That I worked on. Yeah, I used to, I I got into a lot of this stuff when I was young, doing the sweeping and the economy picking as well. Um, you know, the the first thing I remember, like really making me jump up and down, was. Uh, I think Speed Kills by Michelangelo Badio. You know, those little... Those... Yeah, and then maybe some of those Ingve licks as well. Those uh, sorts of sweepy little ideas. The, yeah, the diminished arpeggio is crucial. You just take it up three frets at a time. Yeah. That's my favorite shape for it. So I put that in my solo in um, Anything Like Me by Poppy that kind of ends with an arpeggio thing. It's actually, the whole thing is very in this vein. It's like, uh, with a Randy Rhodes chord progression. You know, and that kind of brings up some of the other influences as well. There's there's sort of an undercurrent of a neoclassical thing happening in a lot of the a lot of the lines that guys are playing. You know, and of course you can't mention that style of playing without mentioning Ingve. Um, but I always think of that scene in that, in that movie Crossroads, the Steve Vai kind of right. doing the, the devil thing. You know, yeah. but I um, mean playing all those old violin pieces is like a great way to get a handle on your picking technique and, and trying some different things there. You know, I always I you gotta get Paganini's fifth, right? <laughs> Yeah, we got it. Oh, oh. No, I don't have it. <laughs> you gotta have it. There it is. Uh, but Where's all right. So, yeah. So we got a whole bunch of you know things to talk about there and things to think about. But how about some trivia? Uh, throw your answers in the comments, and first to answer correctly gets a shout out. So uh, Eddie Van Halen claimed once in an interview that he got the idea to finger tap from which guitar legend? Um, name the guitarist and the song. And it might not be who you think. So um, let's uh, let's hear that in the comments. We'll see if anybody chimes in with the right answer. But while we're doing that, let's let's get another song happening. How about right. we play one of yours? Oh, little uh, little yeah. blame candy here. Yes, there's a blame candy track called Sweet Tooth that uh, embodies a lot of these techniques. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna drop the riff. Let's maybe come in on some, just yeah. choose, choose some chords for the solo. I'll back you up on that song. <laughs> um, all right. <laughs>
Killer. Yeah. Awesome. So we've got a trivia winner here. Uh, question again was Eddie Van Halen claimed uh, that he that got so the fast. idea of finger tapping from which guitar legend? And Johnny Bean chimed in with the, the answer here, which is that it was Jimmy Page playing Heartbreaker. So shout out to Johnny Bean. I was gonna Whoa. I was gonna say that just I wanted to finish the song first, yeah. but he he got it. Kill it. Nice job, nice yeah. job Johnny. Um, every week we like to assign some homework to our viewing community, and especially those in our Fender uh, play. Uh, so for those in the community, make sure to post your homework so that we can help you out. Uh, Chris, you wanna you wanna help us out with the homework this week? Give us a, mm. a couple assignments there for. I've got some assignments. You ready? All right. You ready? You ready? Yeah, you're ready. Um, <laughs> okay. If you're just starting out, I would highly recommend that you. Um, Turn up your amp really loud and drop the three most important chords to 80s metal, which are A, G, and D. Very important. Uh, if, you're, uh, if you've been playing for a little bit, uh, definitely learn some sort of riff uh, available on Fender Play. You can find Cherry Pie by Warrant, which is a nice little doodad. Ugh. The key to that is getting the real digging in, like I said about the pinch harmonic on every note. Really? Really? Yeah. Um, and then, sorry. <laughs> Take it down. And then uh, some tapping. If you're, if you're advanced, um, you know, definitely learn Eruption by Van Halen. Uh, the tapping section at the end goes a little, that's all I can do. <laughs> or they're going to cut my neck for licensing problems. If you're advanced plus, learn the solo to Don't Give Up by White Lion. Perfect. Mm. Great one. Promising. All right. Well, huge thank you, Chris, again, for coming in um, and sharing all your wealth of knowledge and shred-tastic licks. Uh, we really appreciate you coming on and talking with us. Uh, tell us, do you, you have anything coming up that you want to share that you've been working on? I've just been, uh, I've been in the studio, like, producing a ton. Great. And I've got some stuff I'm super proud of. Um, the Poppy, the artist Poppy, it's a girl named Poppy. Um, uh, we did an album called I Disagree that came out... Uh, like a month ago now? I don't know what day it is. Yeah, a month ago. Uh, I, I disagree with the album. I played a couple of the solos. It's ripping. A song called Don't Go Outside. With crazy solo at the end. I really, really love that album. And uh, produced and uh, co-wrote the entire thing. Um, so check that out for sure. Working on an album right now with the artist Youngblood. And that's shaping up crazy too. Super excited about that. Um, album with this group, a Russian group called Pussy Riot that I'm super excited about um, for many reasons. I really love her message and she's just a crazy lyricist. Nadia, hi. And, um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, there's a girl called Kelsey Carter I've been working with who's amazing. Um, Dorian Electra. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of stuff I'm really excited Dope. about. Yeah, but Exciting. The Youngblood album's crazy, and the, the Poppy album is like my favorite thing I've ever done. Yeah, so. yeah that, that, album, that album's insane. I've been listening to it. It's, it's nuts. Promising. Yeah, yeah. It's super yeah. sick. So, um, round of applause for Chris Griatti. Woo! All right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah so, what, some of this? Oh, I'm coming off. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next up, we're going to bring on our community guru, Dylan, who's going to tell us what's new on the Fender Play site, in the community, and most importantly, who is winning some gear this week. Welcome, Dylan. Ah, ah welcome. Hello. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, Gosh, sir. you know what? I was a little afraid to follow that. Um, our producer had to come get me in the parking lot. I was trying to make a break for it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. Uh, Chris, how do I make noise out of this thing? Come in, your landing gear is down. Is that Hold on. Hold on. Well, we'll just pretend like it's making noise. It's okay. Yeah. Um, I'll mime it. There it is. I'll mime it. So, uh, sorry, go ahead. It's all good. Yeah, let's get to the giveaway. So every week on Fender Play Live, we give away a free piece of gear to a Fender Play subscriber just for hitting your weekly practice streak. So to hit your streak, all you need to do is practice three times a week for at least seven minutes each time, and that qualifies you for the Fender Play giveaway. So, uh, Dylan, can you tell us what they could win? Of course I can. Uh, the lucky winner gets to choose from a list of strats, tellies, jazz masters, basses, amps, and all just for practicing. And the best part is, 
The more consecutive streaks you hit, the more chances you have to win. Nice. Yeah, I know, it's very nice. Double down on it's that. Nice. We don't have a chance to win, but you do. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's okay. Uh, so it's announced right here on Fender Play Live. Uh, so without further ado, Dylan, who's this week's lucky winner? All right, let's get to it. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Helen J. Right. Helen J, come on down. Woo. That's right, Helen. Congratulations. I'm sorry? She's in our community. Oh, she is a community. Helen's a community member. Helen? This is an extra special one right here. Thank you so much for uh, getting three streaks so you could win. Absolutely. Yeah. So for more info on how you can win the giveaway, check the link in the description. Um, so as we've mentioned, we have an awesome and ever-growing community of learners. Uh, Della, Della, can you tell us a little bit more about what's, uh, what's happening there? I'd love to. I'd love to. Uh, so we're rounding 19,000 here. Um, this, I'm, getting my, I'm getting tendonitis in my trigger finger here for adding so many people. I know. It's pretty wow. amazing. If I don't tell you about this guitar, though, I'm going to be remiss. So um, basically, this is the Yellow Fever model. So okay. I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's gorgeous, gorgeous. And uh, I don't have distortion, so I'll do something different. So it's got like some really hot pickups in it, but they definitely kind of have like a little bit of natural compression in them. So yeah, all of these are really amazing sounding. So you got to check them out if you have the inspiration. Absolutely. So the community is a basically uh, 19,000 people that get together, they talk about playing guitar, and there some of them are new, some of them are intermediate, some of them are advanced, and it's a really nurturing spot. Some people have called it the most nurturing spot on Facebook. I, I can't underwrite that, but I think it might be. Uh, and then. <laughs> The next thing would be, uh, uh, we want to give a couple shout outs to different people, uh, starting with Erica Harrington. So she wrote an original song and she shared it with us in the community and we absolutely love it. Uh, another one was Sean Kimmitz, I believe, uh, did an awesome job collaborating with his daughter on a song and awesome. it was pretty incredible. Yeah, so I love that. we really enjoyed that. Sweet. Thank you both. Awesome. So uh, a couple updates from Fender Play. Uh, every week we're adding new songs and skills to the site, so there's always something new for you to learn. Uh, just this month we've added songs from Cream, uh, Radiohead, The Pretenders, Chris Stapleton, and tons more. Uh, so Dylan, tell us, what's, what's new this week? Can I borrow your axe? Man? Yeah, of course. Oh, thank you so much. This is, the, this is the kind of community we have here, too. It's also very welcoming, yeah. So, <laughs> all right, so we've got, Mine is yours. we've got a couple new ones. So can you guys all help me out with this one? This is kind of a sing-along. Okay. okay. See if you recognize it. So it's, yeah. it's the sweater song, right? So yeah. everybody put on their sweater and learn that one. And then we've got, uh, let's see, so this song is... Uh... That was Take Me to Church by Hoser. It nice. was a little bit of an arrangement there, but I love that. You might be able to learn the regular version on Fender Play. And then the last one has some really awesome chord voicings in it. This has incredible counterpoint in the song. It's worth checking out. It's also a great mix. So we have. Do you recognize it? Anybody recognize it? No? It's a. Ah! So it's like really cool. The guitars hit so hard in that song. You awesome. gotta check it out. It's a great new lesson. Killer. All right, well, let's uh, let's wrap up there. We have a huge thank you again to Chris for stopping by and talking to us about all this 80s metal stuff. Um, thank you to all of you for tuning in at home and join us next week for another episode. I'm your host, Sebastian Bentley. Keep practicing and we'll see you next time. Let's do it. Boom. <laughs> it's a group effort, folks. Yeah. It's a group effort.